Hello, Omniverse. I am Joe Bear. I'm Zach. And I'm Diego. And this is Behind the Beard. Or lack thereof. I don't know if it's so much the lack thereof anymore, Zach. It's coming in pretty strong. See, I, we've talked about it before. I feel like we're, you know, chasing the discomfortable. i call out to a previous episode. But yeah, I'm trying to get through that discomfortable phase and just letting it happen. And I was forced to when I was on vacation because I didn't bring my razor. So like, I couldn't do any trimming of it. So yeah, we'll see. Making some progress here, guys. It's good. It's good stuff. Appreciate that. All right. Well, we're going to dive right in here. Uh, and this, of course, uh, this this pod, as they're called, as the cool kids call them, is... Yeah, oh my gosh, this is off the rails already. It's going to be a fun one. Everyone, stay tuned. Uh, we've got some fun topics here. We're going to delve deep into today about um, the power of remote work. And we're just going to talk through things that motivate us to be better versions of ourselves. Our goal is to provide you with thought-provoking conversations that spark ideas, inspire change, and help you on your journey towards personal and professional growth. Uh, in today's episode, like I said, we're talking about the power of remote work, specifically the flexibility factors that come with it. As more companies adopt remote work policies, it's important to understand the benefits and the challenges of working remotely. And you know, most of all, the fun and awesomeness that comes with flexibility, especially like Omni, we're remote first 100%. Everyone's just got to get on the coattails and let's go. Now sit back and join us in our conversation on the amazing capabilities of remote work. Right, like not wearing shoes. Or socks. Or socks. <laughs> Who needs it? <laughs> Toe jail, as Joe will call it. <laughs> toe you jail. just stole my thunder. <laughs> I, I love to call them toe jail. Like, you know, spread those dogs out. Let's go. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're already talking about dogs. And the first time. <laughs> <laughs> that I thought that you said it. I thought you said toe jam. Um, so <laughs> we nope. can just go there too. Put that sock on. It, your <laughs> toes are all like squished up. I mean, I, I wear uh, features normally, like the the ones that compression socks that keep your feet in line. Let me out. Let me out. Oh, you don't wear toe socks? Are those still a thing? It, funny enough, I saw, I saw toe shoes at the gym the other day. Uh, I was rocking them. I, I, Every time I see them, I just think like they're about to go start climbing a rock wall. Like that's what I assume that they're going to to be off and doing. Those were big for, gosh, that was years ago when those came out big. Then they were like all the, well, I don't know, my, I, this is what I recall. I don't know, have sources, so don't come at me. But I recall there are studies that come out after for like, they are awful for your feet. Please do not actually exercise or like run in these run i remember a lot of running like people running on those and yeah i think i heard something similar like they are actually bad for you <laughs> i never heard that i need somebody <laughs> to prove this send us the stats are the toe hugger feet shoes <laughs> good or bad for your feet we need a podiatrist in our in our network to help us out with this one <laughs> i'm glad this is how we started um the episode but yeah anyways <laughs> speaking of flexibility <laughs> i i don't know where we go from here but we're gonna go somewhere so let, let's maybe uh get off of the toe call and we'll get on to jamming up into our next conversation uh was that a good one no <laughs> terrible no. awful but it's okay we'll go so i think it, it's just clarifying something out there in the world is when i i talk to people and I, I tell them that I work from home, it's a remote job, and they say, oh, that must be nice not to have to work that much. Do you guys ever get that where it's like you're assumed if you're working from home, you're only working like an hour or two a week? Is that what you feel or hear? Well, first of all, I work marketing type of content for a BPO type of business that does gig work from home. So whenever I try to explain that to anyone, it's like impossible <laughs> because I'm either talking to people from like marketing and advertising. So I have no idea what I'm talking about, or I'm talking to someone who has no idea about anything that I just mentioned. Uh, but yeah, I do get a few comments of like, oh, that must be nice to uh, work less or uh, yeah, have all that 
freedom or whatever. But yeah, I do get some of those comments too. How about you, Zach? Yeah, I, I feel like I still even get them at home sometimes, right? Because we'll probably delve into it more. But there are times where I, I have like five, 10 minutes to spare between the call and I'm throwing a load of laundry in or I'm like, oh, I got to put a few things in the fridge so I don't have to later. And I feel that's what people take into account because I'm using that five, 10 minutes, somebody in the office would, you know, go into their neighbor's office and, and jab and all that, but I'm doing it to be productive. And it's taken into account of, oh, you work at home, you got all the flexibility. Like, yeah, my toes are free, but I still am busy, right? There are some days where I feel I'm glued to this desk more than if I was in an office, just depends on the day, but 100% work from home for gosh, 10 years now, or a little over 10 years, yeah, um, <clears throat> and have 100% heard that from here to, to now, then. Like, do you ever get that someone in your house that looks at you and starts talking and you have to go like, <laughs> <laughs> or watch out, I have the webcam on. <laughs> Stop. Phone. No. <laughs> you got to be very clear and concise. Trying to get your child accust like accustomed to it is a challenge mine seven so she's learned she's learned but sometimes are you like or if i just get up you know heaven forbid i have to go to the bathroom between a call or you're done for the day no i just have to refill my water or no i'm just going like any movement where i'm out of the office it's like free game of like oh you're you're mine now no i'm i i can move <laughs> And, and that's a great thing is we're on phone calls with customers. You know, we do want that silent area in the background for all of our contractors to best serve our, our customers there. But it's it, how have you been successful with training your dogs, training your kids, training your significant others of how you work at home? Let's take it from a perspective of being on the phones, like from a customer service agent or what we call a GBA in the Omniverse. Uh, how how would you address that, you know, the internally to address some of those challenges? I would say, so I started my work from home journey on the phones as an agent. Okay. And shortly after I got a puppy. And that in those, this was, if I said about 10, 10 or 12 years ago. So we're looking at, 20, 2013, I think is actually when I started. Maybe it was about 10 years ago. Um, you're looking at a time where remote work was had been out there, but it was definitely not as, I would say, maybe prevalent as now, and especially post-COVID, right? I think pre-COVID, it was, it was firing up some. There was some hybrid. But 10 years ago, it was where I was working. It was, you cannot tell that you're working from home. Nobody should be able to tell. You should just say that you have noise canceling headphones. There was like all these like very strict guidelines. Like if there's a peep in the background, then nada. So um, I got lucky. <laughs> Duncan, who is, is my dog, he's now, he'll be 11 this year. So full my full work at home journey, he's followed along with me. And he just learned did he have some outbursts sure but like he's like a good a good couple like put myself on mute a couple snaps of the finger and then he's good um now my hurdle is i can't train my cat um and so <laughs> it's very often that i'm on a call trying to be serious speaking with you know a client a colleague or anything like that and there's leo just right <laughs> in front of the camera and i'm just everybody kind of giggles at it but after the third or fourth time i'm like okay okay so I'm not a cat owner, but I've been around cat owners and they use the like the water bottle trick. Have you ever thought about doing that? Like spraying them like, no, or I, I don't know how that works. Like give him a squirt. I tried that at Christmas time and he just took it as a shower. I mean, he had <laughs> no care. Like I will get soaked. <laughs> Anything to defy your power. Um, but no, it, it's but it is in long story short, though. It is a, you have to kind of get everybody used to it, but there's still those moments where it's a spouse or somebody in the home, or you have to schedule a service call because you do work from home, but you're trying to work in between things and they're still trying to communicate and you're like, but I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get back. Like male person trying to talk too long. Like, no, like I, I gotta get back. <laughs> you know what this makes me think about? Uh, I think companies doing flexible or remote work uh, tend to be more human because of that, right? Like it's, we are more real 
people, I guess, because we have to deal with all of those things. And if you're in, in a client call and your cat comes through, that makes you more human. Uh, while if you're in an office, God forbid, with a dress code, uh, probably not yourself at all or not that much human anymore. <laughs> So I would fail dress code today because I'm wearing sweatpants, but I look professional from the waist up. We've, we've had that conversation as well, right? You know, it's like I got the polo on top, I got the basketball shorts down below and no toe jail today, right? It's finally warm enough where I don't have to put them away. Um, but I, I go back to my days in the, the call center and I spent an inordinate amount of time worrying about what are you wearing today? Like, goodness gracious, the write-ups I had to do. Oh, that's not work appropriate. We said to dress professionally and you wore club gear. Or that's not the same. Or, yeah, oh, your, your, your pants have a hole in them. You're not allowed to come in. I, you know, it's just all these things that don't matter. Were you providing great service? Absolutely. But it didn't need to be a, a threshold that we had to cross on a daily basis, right? Um, and we just lost so many hours that we could have been working on improving our experience with our customers and working on the relationship with our client to address, well, goodness, today's not a t-shirt day. You wore a t-shirt, here's your corrective action. Now don't do it again, or I'm gonna have to fire you because you wore a t-shirt, right? You know, it's cumbersome of a thought process nowadays. But do you see a, a change happening within the market where companies are starting to pull back in and? You know, what what do you guys feel about uh, going from fully remote back to hybrid or even fully on site? I've seen it, right? I think there's been a lot of, especially at the end of 2022 and maybe even start of the buzz of this year's, there's some large companies. There was Twitter, there was Apple, some other ones that were saying like, hey, you don't have to come in every day, but we have this office space. We need you to collaborate in person. We need you to be here. And... <clears throat> I just I feel it adds stress to the point you get it you get kind of accustomed to it like you find your rhythm you find your routine in working in a remote flexible environment right like like we talked about you still have your your meetings you still have your tasks to do I I, I don't I would make it clear that in some of the positions like ours right we still have a structure there's not always the time of like I can just come in and work when I want to. There is that to a degree, but a lot of times we have different things we have to get done by certain times or there's meetings we have to attend at certain times. And adding in that layer of returning to somewhere, or even if it's two or three days a week, you have to add back in the travel. You have to figure out your food plans, even at a, a greater level. You have to figure out attire. Does everything still fit me that I used to wear two years ago, right? There's just so much stress that I think would bring to the table. Um, yeah, uh, I would be like, uh, gosh. I don't want to go back. And Diego, as a thought leader, you know, why do you think companies are saying come back into the office? Like, what do you think the advantages are from that process? Well, I don't think they're like, yes, there are the collabora collaboration and collaborative environment kind of advantages. And yeah, people do benefit from seeing each other face to face every now and then. But what I, the feeling that I'm getting, and this is my personal opinion, come back at me if, if you will, but I do see a lot of companies that are into like building leases or actually built a new site or something, and they're trying to get people just back in because they need to fill that space, right? Like they made an investment in a physical space. Now, what do they do? Fill it with employees or people that work there. Yeah. Are you all going to go into the office because you're company built this play zone where they have like larger than life games they have cold brew on tap um there's you see those right like here's our employee fun zone or chill zone and that's like a huge marketing standpoint is that going to bring you in so i have a an, an experience with one of those places actually i worked at one of those places with like hoops and pool table and whatever you want to get a McDonald's inside. So you go you and go and get like a McFlurry uh, mid morning may or may have not done it too many times. Um, but like what I noticed was that and I, I, I did not notice my wife noticed it that I, I was like less connected with like my family, my friends, the people around me. I was like trapped inside this really cool building. <laughs> but it yeah, it, it made me lose a little bit of that that touch with my family and with my friends. I think you, you hit the nail on the head, right? It's 
as you were in the bubble of the zone, we have a really cool place, and that's what it was designed for, is a place to escape from the work, to keep you engaged and go there. I see the positive of it. But then when I take a step back and look at it holistically, I'd rather be at my daughter's practice than playing, well, not playing, beating Zach at ping pong, let's be real. Um, I'm awful at it, so I'm, I will admit to that. I'm not even going to challenge or attest to that. Like, you just, it hit it, and it would just be on the floor. Like, there have no coordination. But a cold brew on a Friday <laughs> night, you know, or maybe just a brew, uh, you know, I get it. I understand the, the draw to it all. But I think as the everything is evolving, and we experienced the great work from home experiment, and what did that look like? We saw a greater level of trust. And I think that's what you were alluding to, Diego, is a leadership style of trust where I know you're going to come deliver for me. I can forego the brick and mortar feeling of command and control. Like I need to see you plugging away, even though you just got it down where you're switching screens really quick, hitting the solitaire, may have done that in the past. Uh, Alt tab, if you didn't know, uh, switch screens. Uh, but I, I want to trust in my team. I want to trust in my people to say, I believe in you. I'll inspect what I expect, but we're going to work together on this because we're building the rocket ship and headed to the, the moon together. We're not, I'm not dictating what needs to happen. What are your feelings on the leadership style differences of work from home versus uh, brick and mortar? I would say you feel a little bit more stressed. It, we talked about in a previous episode, I feel like that's one of my favorite phrases, but I like to make those connections where <clears throat> remember at the start of COVID or right around that time I actually was back in an office and then I came back um, back home and my days were not always fully occupied by work or by meetings, right? If things are moving as they should, you should have flexibility. I feel that's my take that you should have flexibility within your days. If you entrust in your team and you're able to deliver on day to day consistent basis. But what was I doing during those times? Walking the floor, random conversations, people just randomly in my office or maybe scrolling my phone. But then you see somebody that have a, a higher authority or a leadership and you're like, oh, gosh, that's, that's a scary, <laughs> right? Where as working from home, oh, I have an hour block. I don't have anything to do. Maybe I need to go run something to the grocery store real quick. I'm going to bring my phone. I'll be engaged. Something comes up. But that way I don't have to do it later, right? And I feel that just that level, I feel like I trust myself more because I feel I have trust from um, <clears throat> others within, you know, the organization that we're in is, is the job done? Is this happening? Like, woo, my phone's right here at my desk. Oh, gosh, that would be right up in some other worlds, right? Um, <laughs> but I feel that I had a, I trusted myself less in an environment, in a brick and mortar environment, because I didn't have that, I felt like there was always a big brother more than I do working at home. And that might be against the norm from people. What about you, Diego? Yeah, I think the command and control type of leadership is obviously the easiest type of leadership you can have, because mm -hmm. you're just like doing that, commanding and controlling. Trusting is harder, uh, but it makes you a better leader and it makes everybody on your organization more productive at the end of the day. Because, yeah, if you go and run that grocery, like you still have to run the groceries, whether you are working from home or in an office. So you had that half an hour to spare, went up, played ping pong with Joe. Uh, and then when you get back home, you still need to go to the groceries instead of putting it somewhere at 11 a.m. when you had the time. But a lot of people don't trust that others are working when they are at home. And maybe that's just they don't create the environment where people are that productive or they don't know how to do that, right? They don't know how to get the best out of other people and make them commit to the same things and believe in what you're building, which is something that I think happens a lot here at Omni, right? Uh, we all believe in this in this rocket. So we're putting our best effort to build it. I, I, I like what you said there. And it's that trust factor at every level. And it's I'm going to trust that you're going to deliver your. Your piece of the pie, so to speak, because if you don't deliver, I can't deliver. My the person next to me can't deliver So it's all interconnected. We're very flat as an organization. It, and the reason we can do that is everyone is doing their part. Right. And it's going to take time, energy and effort. 
it's more challenging to build that trust within you as a business partner or with anyone in the world to say, we're going to do this together and I'm going to trust that you're going to go deliver, right? And if I'm in a command and control environment, I've been there, I've led that way because that was what was required. I never felt like I was delivering, right? It was always, oh, well, you missed an interval 16 months ago at 4 p.m. Why? I'm like, I don't know. I, I, I lost that conversation. I need to move forward. I need to look ahead. But it was always a miss. It was always like you did something wrong. It was never, here's what we're doing right. So it's changing the ever philosophy of everyone involved from contractor all the way up of here's what we're building towards the future here's what we're working towards there's going to be challenging days sure we're going to have high call volumes low call volumes all of that normal stuff that ebb and flow within the company but we are all working together and if i have the power of flexibility if i walk into that call center i've done this in my past life somebody's starting at 9 a.m i have no call volume i say I, I don't need you today. So you just spent an hour, hour and a half getting ready and then left, had to get sent home with no pay, right? That's not a great feeling. But if I'm working from home and I'm on the phones, yeah, okay, I got other stuff I can go do. Not a big deal whatsoever. Yeah, I was still expecting to make money there, but I get it, business happens. But oh, now there's going to be volume later. Well, it's easier for me to come back in, right? And be more on demand with my revenue opportunities to with the companies as well. So there's the, also that flexibility of right time, right place, intermixed with I've got appointments, I've got dog walking, grocery shopping to do. Yeah. And it's also just the mindset and flex, mindset of flexibility and expectations, right? There are some days where I go into, into the day and I know Monday, Tuesday, this week, for example, I've had a lot of task work to complete. It's end of month. There's a lot of things to button up. There's a lot of meetings with different um, clients to go through. I had that in my head. Like, okay, Zach, you're you're really not going to have that flexibility today to maybe go on a walk or, or do any of these things that you enjoy to break up and really um, hone in on remote work. But that's okay because later in the week, you have that, uh, that ability to do something. And that's where I believe there's a challenge for people who start remote work and maybe have never done it before, or they go through it and they're like, it's not quite for me. And I find that relates to expectations of what your flexibility is going to be and to the points that we made, the trust in yourself, right? You need a rigor of like, do this at this time, do this at this time, do this at this time. You can set your, your expectations, set your routine just as you would in an office, but not with toe jail, right? There's... <laughs> You could have this flexibility um, within, but it's a lot. I, I think there's a lot of self-constraint within working from home, right? Uh, it is it, a, is it easy or tempting to want to just walk away from your office location and, and do whatever? Probably not as maybe once as it was once. Wow. Maybe not as much as it once was. Let me slow down there. <laughs> um, but yeah i feel like there's always a, it's a hot like a hot day joe said it's warming up it's 7 to 80 degrees oh gosh i'd love to just go on like a, a hike for the day but it's a lot of that self-constraint and realizing you're making a name for yourself and this is still your career so you're making it what you're making it of whether it's a, a gig to get you through a time or whether this is part of your progression plan it's still a job that you are signing up for I like where you're headed with that and it's just setting the expectations. You know, we've briefly touched on it. A lot of people think working from home means I work an hour a week and I get paid for, you know, $72 million. Oh, yeah, no. Where do you sign up for that? I, for I, I, I'm still looking on LinkedIn, but uh, <laughs> that doesn't exist, right? It, it's wherever you are, you're going to make the most out of your career or what you want to be. So again, I'm trying to level up my skills and I take that remote freedom time that I, I've not spent in a car. You know, I didn't know we talked about it before. I drive a lot, but it's not for work. Um, but in the times that I would have been at the water cooler going to get some M&Ms or demolishing Zach at ping pong, it, 
is spent building my skill sets, right? I'm doing a LinkedIn learning, I'm doing a Coursera course or whatever the case is, maybe just reading a book or listening to a podcast. Those are the things I can do to level up myself to work towards that one hour, $72 million job, but it's not real, right? So we've got to level set with each other. Remote work is real work. It's not freedom from work. It's freedom to be there for kids, to schedule what you need to, but is it always going to be there? No, it, it's it's a balancing act no matter what. Um, and there's a lot of power and value that anyone can pull from this model. And frankly, it's gonna be hard for us that have experienced it to go back. And I, I would challenge, you know, somebody that's watching or challenging these companies that say that there needs to be calib uh, calibration or collaboration in person because of whether you're company as a product or any of these things, I challenge that because in a fully remote environment, you have so much access to a diverse pool and diverse talent, right? And there's so much flexibility of, I can tap into a resource from across the, the globe that's going to bring me good insight that I did not have before. So there's also just flexibility in that realm that leverages us to a, a great level too. So we talked about a lot of the positivities. I mean, there, there's a ton of statistics out there where you've better work-life balance, less stress, less absences, better morale, less sick days, right? I can power through for an hour or two, but there are challenges and we gotta be cognizant of them. You know, it's uh, struggling to unplug at the end of the day, that gray line gets there and you've got to really train yourself. Feeling lonely. Right. Um, we've talked about that before. It, it could be lonely, even though I'm talking to everyone all the time, that physical that you talked about, Diego, of just meeting up every now and then there's a power to it. Sure. Uh, humans are social creatures. Um, and, but very few of anybody that's pulled and this is a Zipia uh, poll here, want to go back. Right. The power is there. We've experienced it. We want it. Let's make it better. Let's not pull back. You know, always continue to look forward into the future. Well, anything else we want to go over with the power of flexibility in the remote work world? All right. uh, I'm not sure. No, I, I I would say it's it's where I would want to stay and where I aim to be. I no to I feel that this question is probably brought up. No, I do not have the power just to binge watch Netflix throughout the day. <laughs> I'm not constantly just the TV's not on. Right? There's not always that uh, ability. If I did, I would not be able to focus on my job at hand or focus on the importance of the show. Uh, so that would be my challenge because I think I've heard that more times than not when you go to your first question of, um, oh, do you hear like, you work from home, you have that, you just don't really work. Mm. I'm just like you in the office. I work, I watch my TV at seven, eight o'clock at night. <laughs> And yeah, I think that and what you were saying, Joe, about that one hour a week, $75 million job uh, that doesn't exist. I think most of the people that I admire, look up to, uh, that I think are successful, they don't do that, right? They don't binge watch Netflix uh, all day long. Uh, they're most likely doing something productive or thinking of something productive through the day, uh, no matter how much flexibility they have or no matter how much, like whatever environment they work on, they're just being productive and work from home and the flexibility that it gives you, it allows you to be better, to become better. And yeah, just think about it. Like if you're watching this and you're thinking like, I want to sign up with Omni because I want to binge watch Netflix all day. Uh, think about it twice and think about like, who do you really want to be and what what do you want to achieve in your life? I, powerful words, mic drop. I, I'll couple in a real life experience on that. I watched more movies in the call center world in the brick and mortar because I always had the TVs playing all the time than I do working from home because I'm so focused on being a better me and a better person and sharing as much love out there in the world as possible. That is where the time energy is focused on, not catching up on the latest Netflix binge. Uh, powerful words, guys. I appreciate your time, energy, and effort, and thanks, everyone, for joining us. Uh, quote of the day. Uh, people today really value workplace flexibility and remote work because it allows them to focus their energies on work and life opposed to commuting. That's from uh, Ken Matos. So great quote there. Uh, and as always, hashtag keep learning and let us know what you're learning about too. Uh, please like and subscribe to our channel for more great content. If you'd like to reach out to us, 
hit those DMs or please btb at oiteam.com. I never thought I would have to ask so politely. Uh, join us next week when uh, we continue on our topic about uh, remote work, the power of remote work, and this is less home stress equals better workability. For Zach and Diego, I'm Joe Bear, and this has been Behind the Beard. Bye, everyone. <laughs>